Bang. Hello guys and welcome. Oh, what the fuck was that, bro? Hi guys and welcome to my first video with my face in it. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Nathan, also known as R23. Um, my Instagram link is down there so you can see all my work. I've been an automotive photographer for two years um, and I decided to make this video because when I first started, that hair is pissing me off. So, so when I first started, I had no idea on how to do automotive photography, no idea on how to edit automotive photos. Um, so I turned to YouTube and I was like, how do I edit car photos? And it come up and it was a bunch of guys that I had no idea on what the fuck they were speaking about. It was mad confusing and it didn't, it, like, it, it didn't help me in any sort of way. So the way that I learn is just by grinding hours into using Lightroom and Photoshop myself. And I just taught myself everything, but now, I've managed to explain to quite a few people on how to edit, so I feel like I might as well make this video and then other people might be able to learn from what I've learned as well. So if we flick it over onto my computer, I'm using a MacBook Pro just to let everyone know. Okay, so first of all you want to go out and you want to take the image um, the image I've shot is portrait for Instagram you want to shoot everything portrait if you don't know what portrait means your camera is not like this your camera is like that okay the reason why that is is because when you look at a phone like this everything is displayed this way so that's the way that you want to shoot for Instagram a lot of people be like no 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 but it's the it is the best way that photos perform in portrait so first of all a little quick tip which i'll let you all know um if you go on lightroom this is lightroom cc by the way i'll put a little link down here you can do the exact same shit as what i'm doing on my mac on your phone as well there's an app for it literally you can do exactly what i'm going to be doing today so the crop you want to be using for instagram is four times five that one and the best way of gaining interest into your image on Instagram is by having the main focus of what you want within the center of the image. This this isn't necessary, but it's tend to like uh, uh, it's what <laughs> it's what I do, and that way it works pretty nice, and it just grabs people's attention when they're scrolling through their feed. So we'll go for that first of all. We'll crop that so it's center. Boom. Um, right, I'm going to explain all these tools. I'm not going to teach you how I edit in a way. I'm just going to teach you the tools and I'm going to let you create what you want to do, basically. So first of all, I'm looking at this image now. You have to take a good photo to begin with. You don't want to be taking photos where there's all other cars and all someone's nan in the background and someone's nan's dog. Like, <laughs> you, don't, you don't want that in your image. You want a nice, clean image to begin with and it has to be pretty crisp. If you shoot in raw, it really helps when you're editing as well. So, this photo is quite underexposed to begin with. That's because I tried to grab um, the oranges in the sky, which I've managed to retain by underexposing. So, first of all, I'll explain to you what each and everything does. So here you've got, oh, let me shut that down. Here you've got exposure, that's your brightness. Imagine you're turning your brightness up and down on your phone. That's literally the exact same thing. Contrast, in the way that I explain it, is the less contrast you have, the less like compact and it, how everything is into the image but when you when the contrast is higher it sort of compacts everything more into the image I was, I'm probably explaining it in a completely wrong way but that's the way that I sort of understand it so if you go there everything's sort of unpacked contrast in everything's sort of packed in um, highlights they're the brightest part of the image the higher that is the more it blows them out the lower that is the more it pulls them back um, shadows are pretty self-explanatory um, you literally, the higher the shadows are, the more details in the shadows. The lower the shadows are, the less details in the shadows. The whites is the whites. So the brighter that is, the brighter the whites are in the image. And the same with the blacks. You get the sort of gist of that. So that's that explained. This piece of equipment is something that completely confuses everyone. I remember the first time I looked at this, I was like, bruv, what the, what is this? So this is called your tone curve. This one here is for your black and whites. This one here is for the reds and the tills. This one here is for the greens and the purples. And this one here is for the purples and yellows. So 
I don't tend to muck about with this too much with my images. As far as I know, I'll probably explain this wrong again, but this is the way that I've learned. Um, the top part of the graph will adjust the whites. Okay, Ooh, the whole thing's moving. I mean, do little, I'll put some pinpoints in. So when you pinpoint a minute, it allows you to move parts of the graph. So the top part adjusts the highlights and the whites within the image. The bottom part, the bottom part, the bottom part adjusts the the blacks and the um, it's like just the low parts of the images, like the dark part. Okay, right, so that's that covered. The temp, okay, so this is your white balance. Imagine this from like going to a cold day to a sunny day. That's That sort of sets your color, basically. The tint is also like a tint that you can put on the image. Sometimes you need to use tint because you lose whites. Vibrancy, it's pr I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm just going for it for the sake of it. Um, yeah, vibrancy is sort of how vibrant the colors are. Um, saturation is literally how your colors, how much color there is. So if you take all the saturation out, you've got a black and white image. Saturation all the way up, you've got some weird painting. Um, here's your color mixer. So this is how you adjust every single color individually. So say if you wanna make this orange sky pink then you can make it pink if you want to make that part of the orange darker you bring the luminance down that adjusts the brightness and like how bright that is the saturation so if you want to take that let me go back so say if you wanted to take all of the orange out then you just pull the pull the saturation of the orange out if you don't like the orange for some reason okay then you got texture i would not touch that with a barge pole um, for car photography, let's, let's not fuck with that. Um, you've got clarity. Okay, so clarity is something that is madly overused. So, I don't actually know how to explain it, but if you look at what it does, it basically makes stuff look really shiny. And sometimes it can look really sick, and sometimes it can look absolutely terrible. So I would avoid ever really going over 30 clarity because you'll just end up making some sweaty looking images. <laughs> and if you go to the top right here, you have then got split toning. This is where you can put colors on your highlights and colors on your shadows. So as I go through with this, you can literally change the complete vibe of this. So I'm pulling around the highlights at the moment and I'm pulling different colors. So you can pull some mad orange vibe and this is just your shadows along here. So the shadows, I'm just adjusting the colors of the shadows. So you could have your shadows pink if you wanted them. Okay, right, I think that is, that's the basics of everything covered. We'll actually get into editing now. So let me reset everything I've done so far. So first of all, we're gonna come straight in. Um, I'm gonna put little timestamp things in as well. So people can just flick to when I start editing and stuff like that. Okay, so first of all, you wanna do a crop, four times five crop look it look at the image so it looks pretty good in the center of the image that way it will bang more on insta bang sorted exposure this image is mad underexposed so that means that when i shot that photo i deliberately underexposed it to get that detail within the sky if it was too exposed then you wouldn't have got that detail within the sky so i'm gonna slightly raise the exposure on this um i'm looking at this now and then i'm thinking oh it could do with a little bit of contrast so we'll, we'll pull a little bit of contrast into it highlights if you drop the highlights out we're gonna we're gonna bring back some details within the sky now i don't know if you guys can see that um shadows i'm gonna pull them up because as you can see there's a lot of shadows so we, we've raised we've raised that up a nice amount there whites i'm gonna i'll make it pretty white throw the blacks down slightly right we're gonna muck about with the tone curve now so I'm gonna split it completely in the middle um, I'm gonna actually drag this down here because this is adding a bit more of like a moodier a moodier vibe and lift the tip of it and that's just basically what I've just done then I've made the black sort of look a bit more black and lifted the tip so i've lifted the bottom of that so it's giving it a slightly like slight misty look to it i think that's the way people explain it um okay so we're on temp now i kind of like the temp of how this is 
but it could look quite sick. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna make the temper this warmer because I feel like it does the sky some favors. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave the tin vibrance and saturation how they are because I feel like that looks perfect in my opinion. The, the actual image, this is, the, the raw was quite nice to be honest. It was quite a clean image. Um, it was an image that I shot in LA. Shout out to Through Films, Ali. He's a G. Um, okay, so we're now going to start mucking with the colours. Um, I can see the orange and I want to pull the orange out more, so I'm going to add some saturation to the orange. But that, the key to editing, you don't want to overdo shit because the moment you start pulling shit to 100, you're just going to fuck that image up and it's going to look AIDS. So I'm pulling that up slightly and the yellows. I'm gonna add a bit of an orange tone to them and then that way it's all flowing a little bit nicer but I can see there's a lot of blues. There's a lot of blues in the sky now so I wanna, I'm gonna dump them blues out by reducing the saturation. And I might even hue it to like a little bit of a, a till vibe so they keep, yeah, that's nice. Okay, so I'm quite happy with how the sky looks. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of clarity as well. Um, I'm gonna go for around 18 clarity, just so it's got like a nice standing out vibe. And now this is where we start to selectively edit stuff. Um, I'm gonna do a radial filter, that's that circle one there. And that basically allows you to edit certain parts of the image rather than doing the whole image. So I'm literally gonna raise the exposure slightly on the car and I'm pulling a straight flat radial filler like so up the exposure a slight bit more um i kind of like how the car looks now you're seeing the green a fair amount because the way that you've got to edit this it's still going to be like a silhouette sort of photo because well that's <laughs> i've just spat everywhere <laughs> um the way that i want this photo to look is like a silhouette style photo i don't want it to um I don't want it to look like the car's really gleaming. I want the, I just want the photo to blend in nicely. Um, so I'm going to reset the brush and I'm going to drop highlights to zero, uh, exposure down a slight bit. And if you zoom in, uh, the way you zoom in on this is just by pressing the space bar and clicking. I'm also going to bring myself in a bit more. Now I'm on the brush tool. This allows you to brush certain parts of the car. So what I'm gonna do is actually tint this windscreen. So by reducing the highlights and the exposure, you can use that to tint certain parts of the image. So zip that around. I'm trying to do this pretty quick. delete a little bit of that because I went over the lines and now when we zoom out that basically has got like a little it's a little tint on it it's not like some mad reflection on it um, what I actually am going to do I'm going to start a new brush so you hit this little button up here reset the sliders I'm going to up the exposure on the wheels and try and bring out some of the detail within the wheels so I'm literally painting around the wheels and I'm gonna bring the exposure up a slight bit more. And that way now we can actually see the wheels. Now we're talking. Um, I'm now making a linear gradient filter, which is this one here. And I am gonna sort of drag it up from the bottom and make it quite light. Add a bit of clarity to this as well. And this way, what I'm doing, I'm making the ground look a bit more detailed because the ground looks sick there. That's but in the Azusa Mountains, everything looks sick. And to be honest, as far as it goes, the way that you can check as well, if you hit, bro, I don't even know what this button is, but I always press it. It's like a, it looks like that, and it's next to the space bar. If you hit that, <laughs> if you hit that button, you can see the original and what you've edited. And I am pretty pretty happy with that as far as it goes for a simple edit I feel like that's pretty good and the best way of saving it is just go export JPEG large boom export straight out and then that's done you're finished um, 
I think I've covered pretty much everything on what to do with this. Um, I'm going to leave you a load of raw files of mine so people can practice and hopefully they can get better. Uh, the video has gone on for longer than what I expected but I tried to do it all in one take deliberately. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed the video and I hope you've actually learnt something. I'm quite happy to answer any questions if people need me to help them with anything. When I get a chance, I'm pretty busy all the time to be honest, but I will do my best. Thank you for watching and the next video should be pretty soon.